What's up, NASCAR Racing fans? This is Ryan with NASCAR All Finish Reviews, and I'm back with another video. So I know it's been a little while since I've actually put up a video. I'm sorry about that. Uh, there's been other circumstances that have been around. So yeah, we're finally back, and uh, I'm glad to be up here. So let's go ahead and start out with the review. So today's review will be of Chase Elliott's uh, 2017 Can-Am Dual Win. So this car, actually, ironically, I actually kind of wanted to pick up, and I kind of wanted to not pick it up for a couple different reasons. Uh, one of those reasons being... Uh, this could potentially be only, you know, Chase Elliott's only win in the 24 car. So, I mean, I know it's not really considered a win. That's one of the reasons why I did not want to pick it up, because I only want to pick up one car for Chase Elliott in 2017, uh, one raced win car. And uh, if he actually got a win, uh, like an actual official win, then yeah, I would have picked that one up and forego this one. But uh, seeing how we're pretty much through the season, we have not seen Chase Elliott get a win yet. He's been close. He's been very, very close. He's had two second-place finishes in the last two races, uh, being Charlotte and what was the other track? Was it? I don't remember. Anyways, yeah, so he's been very, very close in the past couple races, and you know, hopefully he'll get that win before too long. It seems like he's been really strong in the chase, but uh, unfortunately, he still has not gotten that win, so I definitely wanted to pick this up before it goes out. And... Uh, before it gets harder to get a hold of. So yeah, there we go. And uh, I guess that is the box. There's really not too much to talk about it. Uh, it's standard box. It is a little bit different from the 2016s. Uh, it's got more white on it for sure. But yeah, this is not a specialized box for a win because, like I said, this is not an official win. We do have the uh, identification label right here, Chase Elliott, number 24. Napa Can-Am Duel, number one win, 2017 SS, one of 824. So yeah, um, yep. Yeah, so this car uh, is pretty much the same thing as the uh, pole win or the standard finish car or the uh, regular scheme. But uh, I'd much rather get this car than his just standard 2017 car uh, for a couple different reasons. For one, uh, lower production quantity. This car is more likely to go up in value. And uh, this car is definitely better than the pole win car in my opinion because it does have a little bit of scratch on the side and it does mean just a little bit more to me. But yeah, so there we go. I guess we'll take a look at the car right here under the hood, or under the cover at least. So there we go. Very, very nice looking car. And uh, we'll set that in the back. We'll take a look at the card real quick. But yeah, so here you go. Here's the card that comes with all the cars that uh, come in the 124 scale with the uh, raced versions, I guess you could say. Um, Chase Elliott, k and Duel number one winner, Daytona Beach, Florida, February 26th, 2017. Time of race, 56 minutes, 13 seconds, start position from first, total laps, 60 of 50, or 150 laps. Number of cautions, 2 for 7 laps, number of leaders, 3, laps led by leader, 25, margin of victory, 0.156 seconds, driver career wins, first career dual win. So there you go, see Chase Elliott holding up his trophy, and we see here on the side, Elliott wins, k and duel at the Daytona. In high speed, 60 lap dash to the finish, driver Chase Elliott won the opening k and duel at Daytona. After a late caution with nine laps to go, Elliott kept his number 24 Hendrick, Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet out front, holding off the competition to take the checkered flag. Elliott became the first driver since 1996 to win both the Daytona 500 pole and Can-Am duel at Daytona race. So I'm kind of curious who that other driver was that won in 1996. Uh, I'm not too sure. Maybe it was possibly Dale Earnhardt. That would be probably my guess. But... Yeah, anyways, we'll go on to the car right here, and uh, first off, what you notice is uh, this car actually does have just a little bit more metallic finish than uh, his paint scheme from 2016. I actually have that car as well. We'll uh, get it over here on the camera. But uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. You can kind of tell with the uh, the color of on the hood, um, it definitely has more of a metallic finish than this 2016. 2016 just has more of a standard uh, finish. Of course, the yellow splitter instead of the red splitter. Of course, this car has just a little bit more yellow on it. And uh, really, when it first was revealed, I was much more a fan of the 2016 version with the much less yellow. Uh, I just liked the way it kind of looked a little bit sleek, a little bit more basic and stuff like that. But as the year grew on, this yellow accent right here just really started to grow on me. Like I said, at first, I was not a fan of it. Uh, it took me a little while, but yeah, this, this game is probably my favorite out of the three that he's running. Of course, Hendrick Motorsports did reveal... This 2018 scheme for Chase Elliott, of course, that car will be ran on a Chevrolet Camaro. Uh, so I'm super excited about that. Those Chevrolet Camaros look really, really awesome. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. The paint scheme, on the other hand, is okay. 
Uh, I was really kind of hoping that if he went to a, uh, you know, the number nine car, I was really kind of hoping that he'd go more towards his old paint scheme, maybe like the number nine. Um, like when he ran the Xfinity Series, maybe something more along the lines of that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this paint scheme is okay. We'll see how it grows on me once again. Sometimes it takes a paint scheme to grow on you uh, in order for you to actually really kind of like it, like this one did. But, yeah, I mean, like I said, this paint scheme looks phenomenal, in my opinion. Uh, the way they did the accents, I think, was really, really good, really, really nice. And uh, for the 20 or so laps that I got to see it run at the Coca-Cola 600, it looked great. Uh, it looks really, really great for this 20 laps, of course, until it didn't, which was on lap, like, 20, when Brad Kozlowski rammed right into the back of him and ruined Chase Elliott's day. But, yeah, nevertheless, it looks really, really good. I got some good pictures of that. But, yeah, so I guess we'll actually go over the, the car right here. We've been kind of rambling on about Chase Elliott and his career a little bit. But, yeah, of course, you do see the roof flap or this roof hinge right here for the roof hatch for uh, plate tracks. And, uh... As you all know, of course, no name or uh, Monster Energy banner up here. This is what is one of the major changes from uh, the just 2017 release of Chase Elliott's uh, car. Of course, that release was before the uh, actual announcement of Monster. So, of course, his name is actually up here on the original release. In my opinion, I'm much more happier with this, the blank name banner, and Elliott on the back. So, just a little bit more accurate. So, uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to pick this car up. Uh... Yeah, so, of course, roof flaps do function as they should. Fortunately, Chase Elliott did not have to use those roof flaps during the race. Um, of course, on the hood, you see Napa. If you can see, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but there is just a little, little bit of dirt up here on the hood of the camera. I don't know if you can really see it. But, yeah, there is just a little bit of fine hair dirt. But, uh, of course, yellow splitter with a little bit of tape, not too much. But, uh, mainly because they pretty much taped down the car for, uh, the short laps that were there but yeah let's go ahead and take a look under the hood um we will see here of course pretty much the same stuff as usual chevrolet napa auto parts mountain dew kelly blue book hooters wix filters uh one thing i've kind of wondered is what happened to 3m uh 3m pretty much dropped out of the sport in 2017 and i've kind of wondered you know what happened to them whether they just couldn't get a sponsorship for chase elliott with a lot of other sponsorship that was coming in for chase elliott uh Sun Energy, I think, has sponsored a couple more races this year than it did last year. Hooters definitely came into the picture, so maybe Hooters kind of replaced uh, 3M. I don't know. But, yeah, so we'll take a look at this side. Really not much damage on this car because it is a Daytona race. Of course, that could not be said for Kurt Busch's uh, 2017 uh, Daytona win, but uh, nevertheless, that was just a crazy race. That is a 124 scale that I would like to get, but probably won't end up getting just because, you know, I only have but so much money. <laughs> I've already bought like two different two other cars in the past you know month or so, so I have definitely more 124 scale cars to uh, review in the future. So look for those. I'll try to put one out maybe every week or every month or something. I don't know, but some uh, I'll try to stretch them out just a little bit. I mean, Napa know how here on the back. Of course, the back bumper is all yellow, unlike the 2016 car and. Sun Energy, this is a side that everybody kind of wants to see. This is just a little bit of damage right here from the car. Uh, not too much, but uh, it is there, and it does kind of give a little bit more character to the car. I'm glad there is just a little bit of damage on the car. I'm happy with that, uh, just to kind of identify from any of the other uh, schemes. So now, because of the damage, you know it's the pole, or not the pole wind car, but the uh, Daytona dual wind car. So I uh, see just a little bit of sponsorship there, a little bit of contingencies. Not too much, once again. Um, uh, but yeah, so really not much more to say about this car. Of course, we do have the opening trunk, unlike, uh, Lionel's decided to do in 2018 and remove that car for the ARC series and, uh, give it to the, uh, Elite series. So now the Elite series has an exclusive opening trunk, which really should be standard for all the cars. But in my opinion, I, I don't know how I'm going to like it. I mean, the cars are going to be cheaper, so it does allow me to get a little bit more cars. But, uh, once again... Uh, by making them cheaper and uh, lowering the production quantity, uh, minimum production quantity, uh, it does make the cars a little bit less collectible because there will be more cars out there, higher production quantities, and uh, just, you know, they don't become as rare and they don't become as valuable. Uh, the value doesn't go up as much. So uh, that's kind of nice thing about these, uh, and elites especially, elites, you know, 
the value definitely goes up because there's less of a production quantity, but uh, I just haven't had the money to buy Elites. And really, uh, the 2017 Elites, I mean, they're not too much of a difference uh, from the 2016. They have a couple more stuff and really not the worst. The extra additional like $30 for like a, a SciPod window or anything like that, but uh, I don't know. Uh, the 2018 Elites, yeah, they're, they're okay. I mean, they're pretty much the ARC versions, except they have a side, you know, mirror and a couple other things, but really not my opinion. It, it's not worth the extra $30. For the opening trunk to the side pod window, you know, I don't know. I'll have to see it when we actually start getting them, but uh, pretty much they're just bringing up the prices of these and uh, calling these cars Elites, but nevertheless, let me know what you think about those. In my opinion, I'm just going to have to see. Uh... As one of the things I've learned is, you know, when something new comes along, you just kind of have to give it a chance. Just like this paint scheme, I gave it a chance, and I like it. With the stage racing, I gave it a chance, and it's okay. But yeah, I mean, that's just one of the things when something new comes around. You can't just be the uh, the guys who are just, well, I don't like change. We can't go with anything new. Uh, I like to give it a chance and have my opinion later on. So anyways, that is a review, and... Uh, I guess I will see you guys in the next video. Hopefully another video will be up before too long. I don't know when that will be. But nevertheless, all right, thank you guys. And uh, make sure to stay tuned for some pictures and other stuff. And uh, stay tuned in the next video. All right, thank you guys. This is NASCAR Authentic Reviews signing out. White flag in the air. Last lap of the first of the Can-Am duel. Can he hold them off, bud? I mean, I, I think as long as they stay like this, but if those two, three cars that are three wide back there, if they get two wide or even single foul, and here we go, we see Kevin Harvick getting a big run here. It's going to be tough to hold him off. Wow, that was, that was a big move right there. That was important. That's that was half probably the battle. a winning move. Another run's going to come before this race is over, though. He's got one more block. If he can make that happen, I think he'll win this race. Harvick's got Kozlowski to help in the two. McMurray alone in the one on the bottom. Oh, oh, boy. Boy, I tell you, Keselowski cut Harvick some slack right there, boys. Yep. Yeah, he could have dove to the inside like we saw Denny yep. Hamlin do last year in the Daytona 500. Off turn four, chase from the same place as Awesome Bill from Dawsonville. Wins the Can-Am duel, Chase Elliott for Alan Gustafson. A Daytona Beach product. You are the man. Nice work, Eddie. Good job, boy. Super Friday.